Hey everybody, welcome to my Call This Friday. I'm Barbara Fralinger and I have on as a guest today, one of my very favorite studio owners who is also on my team. Um, his name is Vito Lafada and I'm gonna be talking to him today because I really think it's important for those of you out there who are already a small business owner, whether you own a studio, a gym, or any, any kind of uh, company yourself where you are a small business owner but maybe looking for another source of revenue to come into your facility or you just want to have more time and want to be able to implement something online to eventually build in the future to where you know you're not tied to your company and you're not tied to your business every single day so with that i'm going to introduce Vito, and he's going to tell us a little bit about who he is what he's into and how he was able to build using his own brand and his fitness and um, his studio facility to you know, earn an awesome living. So with that, Vito, will you talk a little bit about yourself? Hey, Barbara. Well, th first off, thanks for having me. This is one of my favorite topics out there because as a, as a marketing and business coach to the fitness industry, these are just, these are topics I talk about all the time. How do you have additional revenue? How do you get income coming in off the floor? Because that's the biggest um, struggle that we have in the industry. We typically only make money when we're standing on the floor. And that's not an awesome way to live life. Because anytime you're sick, anytime you travel, God forbid anything happens like it happened to me when I blew out my back, got a 13 millimeter herniation and went from making 12 grand a month to making $400 workers comp. Nobody tells you that in the industry. What do you do then? And then when I was a studio owner, just being like, nobody tells you, man, the margins are really tough in studio. You're often paying everybody before you pay yourself. And I was just like, there needs to be a better way. And that's kind of when in 2010, Beachbody came into my life. And I was just like, this makes a lot of sense for what we need to do to evolve the industry. So that's how I kind of got the, a little bit of this going. I'm sure we'll dive into that a little more, but what I do out there mostly is I, I teach people how to take their business and their marketing to another level so they can live what I kind of call the fitness Panor's life, where they've got five freedoms, time freedom, people freedom, location people, purpose freedom, and financial freedom. And that's just the whole message. The reason people don't have those is their business and marketing isn't great. So they're struggling out there. So I'm trying to teach them how to be high performers in that entrepreneurial world. So we have a lot of fun. This is one of my favorite topics. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited that you joined us today. And I'm just very, very happy you decided to do this just so we could kind of dispel some of the misconceptions that, you know, studio owners might have um, or just regular small business owners might have. And, um, you know, how are you at first presented with Beachbody? Um, <laughs> So obviously, hopefully, you know, Trina Gray, yes. but both of us were friends in, in a mastermind. So her and I had known each other for a couple of years prior to this. And um, she'd gotten in maybe a year before, but never kind of told me about it. And we, I had just like bought out my ex-business partner, went about $105,000 in debt buying my ex-business partner out in the studio business. I had to short sell my house because I was just like, I can't keep all this going. I need to fit and I had to downsize my whole life and I just moved into an apartment and we were going to go attend an event and Trina kind of calls me. She's like, Hey, I'm going to be in town. There's this like fitness thing going on. You want to come with me to this conference? I'll get you in and whatnot. I was like, Ooh, time with Trina fitness conference. Sounds fun. What not? So I'm like, let's go. And I pick her up at the airport. We drive there and I walk in and I'm starting to walk in and I'm kind of like, why is everybody in? gowns and high heels and there's a lot of women here all dressed up and i'm like what fitness event is this and trina's like okay give it a few minutes let me tell you what this is really about <laughs> so i had no idea what i was really walking into but she took me to like uh like it was the day before summit you know how i think uh platinum presenters was putting on a day before summit okay. and i walk in there and whatnot and Trina kind of just starts explaining to me. She's like, listen, there's this awesome product, Shakeology. I think this could make a difference in our studios because all of our clients, all of us, all of us typically as studio owners back then, this is 2010, 
what you do with nutrition product. All your clients ask you, what do I eat? What do I have for breakfast? What should I have up for lunch? What should I do post-workout, during workout, this, that? We all used to be like, go to GNC, go to vitamin shop, go here, get this product. And maybe you found something you like, but you always deferred the money outside. And we were just like, this doesn't make sense anymore as business owners. Why don't we have in-house nutrition products that we can start making money on that can be something we like, we would recommend to our clients with integrity and authenticity and be like, hey, this is what I use. And they'd be like, oh, great. I don't got to drive somewhere. I don't got to go search something. I don't got to go research anything. We're like, no, no, we did it. We're the pros. We went and found the best stuff on the market. It's now here. And we started to be able to be like, she's like, what if we just start doing that? We'll have additional revenue that's not tied to overhead, payroll, things like that. And I was just like, yeah, man, because you know, you do your math. She's just like, we make 30 bucks for every person that's on this. And I was just like, well, I got close to 200 members and whatnot. So what if I got just half of them on it? I'm like, shit, that's an extra $3,000 coming in. That's like, that's my overhead here. And I was just like, okay, I'm listening. Me being the trainer, I was like, show me the ingredients. Right. I'm like, I'm <laughs> Absolutely. Like, right off the bat. Like, show me the, like, that's the biggest challenge. Like you, if you're dealing with us in the fitness industry, we are like, show me the stuff. And I was, and I was a bit of a nerd about that kind of stuff because I am like, I was a nerd. So I was into science and all the stuff and I'm looking down the list and I'm like, this is solid. I'm like, I, I like, I like this. I'm going to recommend this and whatnot. Let me try it. So I waited for that. But then I started to really like listen for things that were going to create the difference for me. And what made a big difference for me is when I heard Carl Deichler get up and he did a little presentation there. And the first words out of his mouth was like, we're on a mission to reverse the trend of obesity. And I was just like, this dude is standing for something that I've already been doing for freaking five years on my own. So right away, his vision and mission connected to the fact that I'm like, I'm on the same mission. I'm, I'm going to listen to you harder here. And he's just like, we got, we got to create a bigger, ar he didn't use army, I used that word, like army of people to go out because if we're going to reverse the trend of obesity, we need to empower more people. That's why we're reaching into people's lives that have gotten transformation that are role models to other people. How did you do it? How did you get there? I did these programs. I did this stuff. I can hold you accountable because the biggest struggle isn't the workouts. It's not the programs. It's people lose motivation. People need help. People need accountability. People need that. And he's just like, so we're going to create a freaking field of like coaches that go out and help people. And I was just like, I like this. You're talking my language, brother, here. I'm like, this is visionary stuff in my world. And I was just like, I looked to Trina and I was just like, I'm liking this. And Trina just turns to me and she's just like, I know, we can crush this thing. And we just looked at each other and we're like, we got it. We got it. And I don't think we ever looked back. We just got into the business and we ran. We didn't tap dance around anything because we weren't concerned with a lot of the stuff like, oh, what will people think about network marketing and this and that? We're like, who cares about their opinions? We know that this product can serve our clients. And if we can scale our business by creating more fitness coaches around, we're serving the mission. And we're also going to be growing our businesses and our entrepreneurship and all that stuff. But where if you're if you're working with the fitness industry, the biggest thing that they worry about, one of the biggest things that they worry about is well, they're not trainers. They shouldn't be calling themselves coaches and whatnot. And you're yeah. like, well, yeah. they're not creating the programs. They're just, they're like motivational coaches, accountability coaches. They help put people into programs that have been created by certified trainers, master trainers, nutrition programs that have been built by people that are designed to build that. So when you understand that, it helps a fit pro be like, don't worry about the fact that they're fitness coaches. Don't feel that they're gonna take from your jobs. Understand that obesity is at near 70% right now. Why would we be mad at anybody that is trying to help reverse this trend as compared to like there can be comrades in arms going out? And I, I've never felt more empowered when I started to be like beyond the fitness industry. If I'm helping people get transformation and they're bringing people into the table and they're coaches for that, I'm like, amen. We are doing a better job serving this world than I got to be worried you don't have a certification, you don't have this, that, because I'm like, you're not doing the training. If you're on the floor training people, get your cert. If not, and you can just motivate and inspire people off that couch that is the real enemy, hell.
why would we not do this was always my mindset. So anyway, long story, Trina brought me in, showed me that, I saw Shakeology, I listened to Carl Deichler, and I just simply understood I can add additional revenue to my business right now, I can build a bigger team than what I can in just my studio, and I got all in. So how did you, so how did you get into your studio in itself? How did you actually incorporate it? I started out with like, kind of like phases, if you will. Because even I'm the first to admit I was um, ego and ignorant to the videos because I had I, I trained people in my studio. That was part of my thing that I'm like, I can remember a little being like, I ain't going to send nobody to Tony Horton's P90X shit and da, da, da and whatnot. I was just like, I'm, like, I'm like, I like Shakeology, but the videos don't make any sense to me. But also I'll ignore that part of the business. And I'll just look at Shakeology and the team building side. I really got the network marketing side like right away. When I when Trina explained to me the compensation plan and how it worked, I was like, I get it. I get it in two seconds. I was like, this is a revenue share for leading and teaching other people how to run fitness businesses. Get it. So I was just like right off the bat. So that made sense to me and Shakeology made sense to me. But I had my ego like, why would I ever send anybody those videos and whatnot? So for you. Know, Two years, I ignored that. But then I'll tell you what that switch was. Um, so all I did was take Shakeology and I started plugging it into my programs. Because what I was always doing was, if somebody bought at our facility, it wasn't where I'm like, here's just a training package. I was just like, here's training, here's nutrition, and here's how we coach you outside of the session. Because I believe in the trifecta. I'm like, it must be nutrition, it must be training, and it must be accountability and personal development coaching of some kind. So we were already doing it our, our own way that I was just like, oh, I'm going to take Shakeology and just start plugging it into my meal plans. So when somebody buys the program, their Shakeology as a snack or as a solution for this, are you skipping a meal? Plug this in. Are you overeating at some meal? Stop overeating and just have Shakeology. If we just do these small changes, again, remember I was a nerd, so I was just like, I understood behavior change. So I was just like, I gotta start with one small behavior at a time. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna just put one little thing here because it's it was the same, everyone was the same. I was like, you're either skipping meals and that's because of time and convenience. You're overeating at meals because you've been starving for six hours and now you're jamming out some huge meal or you got home late. It was people's lifestyles that were causing their eating behavior problems. Right. And I was just like, I'm just gonna start working on that Oh, you have soda all the time? How about we replace the soda with Shakeology? So it became a tool to start fixing eating behavior problems that were plaguing our clients. That's it. That's it. I was just like, we're going to start with that. And within X amount of months, we had like 60, 70, 80 people on it that we were, I was like, this is making great money for me. I was like, this is awesome because now I'm finally, remember, I'm 105 grand in debt, having to pay everybody first. So I'm like, this sucks. This that, but then Bitcoin comes on. I'm like, this is awesome. I was just like, I'm paying my rent now from this little side business and whatnot. I'm like, this is awesome. And then all I started to do was, hey, trainers, why don't you guys come on the team? You guys are on the floors because I'm trying to get off the floor because I'm the business owner. I should be marketing, selling, running the business more. I got to get off the floor. Otherwise, I'll always be stuck in this studio only living this way. So I started to be like, you guys take some more of my clients. I'm gonna work this business more. Why don't you guys come on this business? You guys talk to all the clients about nutrition because you guys are on the floor. You get them on Shakeology underneath you. You make the 30 bucks. Hey, Angel, how many clients do you see every day? 40. Jesus, what if you got 10 of them on Shakeology? You're making an extra 300 bucks a month. Is that your car payment? She's like, yeah. I'm like, do this. And you guys, and all I did was teach the trainers to start coaching people in nutrition, get them on Shakeology, and they started to make more money, and it didn't hit my payroll. I was like, excellent. It's on Beachbody's payroll. I'm like, I like this model for helping me out here and whatnot. So I was like, cool. And those are the only two things I started with, plugging Shakeology into – this is what studio owners and trainers do um, typically wrong when it comes to nutrition products. They'll put it on a shelf and they'll say, there it is. Right. 
I was like, that doesn't teach them how to use the product. I plugged it into programs. So the person learned how to use it during a 21 day period or a 30 day period, 14 day, whatever the hell it was. It didn't really matter. And they were like, oh, so this is how I do it for breakfast or here's how I do it for lunch or here's how I do it if I'm at work. So then they learned how to use the product as a part of their life to solve a problem in their life that got them better results. So of course the person was like, oh, now I understand why I need it. That helped build the retention of the product as compared to there it is on the shelf. Don't you get it? Like, yeah, it's a meal replacement. And they're like, oh yeah, meal replacement sounds good. I'll buy it once. But then the bag sits on their shelf or they try it a couple of days here or there but they never use it as a part of life and hence they don't get the result from it that they need to. So then they don't realize the benefit in their life and they stop using the product. And then the trainer's got to go feel like a salesperson and right. they got to be like, come on, why don't you buy another bag? It's a great thing. It has 70 vitamins, minerals and probiotics and enzymes as compared to dude, you're, you're a, in the morning, you're just like two of your kids are running around. One ran out of the house naked and you honestly don't know where they are. You are a busy <laughs> mom and you're just like, good God, I got the other kid on my hip and I'm just trying to figure out how the hell do I get through my morning and think that coffee's my breakfast. I'm like, let's just stop that crap. Let's at least have Shakeology 60 seconds. You eat something, you're fueled. You're not going to throw your kid through the wall at 10 a.m. because your blood sugar is crashing. And right. that's all it is. just coach people through that stuff. Down the road, I figured out other things in the sense of like, you know, as a studio owner, our biggest problem is people in the sense of staff and things like that. Because you're like, one, it's payroll. Two, good God, just finding good people that treat the fitness industry as a career, show up on time, are dedicated, are willing to follow up and coach people beyond like, oh, my hour session's up. I'm off the clock now, and they go back out into their life. That's very, very difficult. Oh. Are you there? I think we lost him a second. Oh, there you are. Oh, hey. Okay. So <laughs> I was just like, that was weird. But I was hoping it fixed the camera thing. But no, damn it. Um, <laughs> but so check this out. I started to realize that I'm like, um, I, I owned a personal training style studio, group training, semi-private training, typically the the like – uh, not cross fit, but that's an easy analogy for people to understand. And I was like, I want my clients doing Pilates. I want them doing yoga, but I couldn't get those classes to work inside my facility because it was more of a like metabolic lifting style studio and whatnot. But I'm like, I want those disciplines. And also I was just like, Payo had come out mm -hmm. and I was just like, Oh, what if Shalene is my Pilates instructor? where I don't got to hire her, I don't got to pay her, but I can tell my clients, I want you doing two days a week of Pilates style workouts, but you're just going to do them at home. Because in instead of going and join a Pilates studio, instead of going and joining a yoga studio, nothing against Pilates and yoga studios, but you know, people are busy, people were wanting more convenience. I started to recognize very early that the at-home fitness market is going to grow because of those two things, right. convenience and time. And if I didn't honestly care whether the person was in my studio or not in my studio, I was just like, I want the person building the habits of fitness every day in their life. And if I can tell them, do this Pilates workout at home on the days you're not here at the gym, I was creating off day training for them. And also I was just like, I don't need staff to do this. I was like, Shalene is going to be my freaking yoga instructor, Pilates instructor and whatnot. And I started selling things like Pio and stuff. I didn't dip into the metabolic workouts like Tony Horton's and those yet because it was really like the additional disciplines that I couldn't provide, but that opened up another revenue stream. I was like, all right, now we're selling these videos. We're selling this thing here. And all of a sudden I was just like, finally, I got my own ego out of the way. And I was like, these fitness DVDs can serve a purpose when I start recognizing, you know what? There could come the day and it's happening now. I started to see this in 2012. But I was like, online and mobile is going to put a dent in the in the off in like the brick and mortar world, just because we are gonna go apps, we are gonna go streaming. Netflix was starting to come out and snap. I'm like, oh, dudes, it's gonna happen. And I learned from a mentor of mine: diversify your ass, your business. And he's just like, so if you're gonna lose potentially one business because behaviors are changing. 
why don't you go look at what that behavior is and go get some revenue from it? So I was just like, oh, the online world, the mobile world, the streaming world is going to come. Let me start building this so that when that momentum comes, I've already been in it for years ahead of most people. So that let's just say I'm losing a grand a month in my brick and mortar because people just like, honestly, I traveled, I moved, I this, I that. I, I'm not coming as frequently as I want to. So I'm going to downgrade my membership to this or whatnot. But they're like, oh, you have an online membership that I can do like when I travel or when I'm at home and whatnot. I'm like, yeah. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I was like, all right. I shifted the income to another part of my business so that I didn't feel the dent that most people are feeling today in their brick and mortar where they're like, revenue is really hard. It's tough. There's so much competition. There's so much out there. I'm like, well, it's because y'all are looking the same and you right. didn't protect your butt and diversify your business. Online and mobile and streaming are here. You better have those streams either by partnering with somebody that can give it to you or you better go build your own. And then if you build your own, you damn well better know how to market it. You damn well better have an audience and you damn well better know distribution. I was just like, I don't want to build all those things. I'll create the audience, but Beachbody, thank you for like, I just, who I'm like, I would have to create a million dollar studio, shoot those DVDs, do all that, package it, do it, label it, market it, figure out all the branding and whatnot, and then turn around and try to be like, that's millions of dollars of investment to then be like, what's your ROI if you don't return that? Mm -hmm. I was like, screw that, Beachbody, you spend all the ROI, I'll just be the marketer. I'll just I'll sell it to my people with the audience I'm naturally building. That's way smarter for me. That's how you get big profit margins. That's how I was just like, oh, sweet, this is awesome. And I loved it. And I had to get out of my own way to understand they're not my brand. They are a partner, just like TRX or Perform Better or anybody is. You're a partner giving me tools to go get my people better results. And even if it's a shift in income, it's still income. It's right. still income. Right. And that's all that mattered to me. So then eventually I started to do that. And then I recognized, oh man, with this model, I don't have to just work with trainers in the local five to 10 mile radius of my studio. I can now start working with fitness professionals. Because for me, I come from the fitness industry. Obviously other people have a different, but that was my niche. And I started speaking and presenting in the fitness industry. So I was just like, I was just growing a following of fit pros and studio owners. So I was like, hey dudes, what if we do this different? Because I used to never be able to work with you in the past because you're in Michigan, your studio's in Texas, your studio's over there. But you want to learn how I figured out how to figure out like financial freedom? Because within about four years of in the beach body business, goodbye all that debt, goodbye all that problems I had, goodbye the short selling of the house and whatnot. I built us high six figure income out of that business that I in 2014, I got to make the choice of, I don't want the studio anymore. I'm going fully online. I'm going fully into other things. And I was able to make a decision many in the studio world can't make because they're like, I can't close this down. I'm not, I don't have the income. I don't have the backup and whatnot. So then they don't have freedom of choice. And I was just like, Beach Body helped give me freedom of choice to make different decisions in my world. And at that point at scale, I'm like, I'm working with fit pros all over America, Canada. Now we're starting to move into the UK that I was just like, I wouldn't have had this if I didn't have this business model, but I look at the business model as my opportunity to be a business coach to other people in the fitness industry to say, here's how you can grow your business in other ways by just leveraging some of this stuff. And now we get to work together. And you get to be part of a team, have systems, have trainings, have new revenue models, compete in an evolving industry, in an evolving world. How freaking awesome is this? If you're willing to see the opportunity that's in front of you. The thing is that they have to be willing to reinvent and be evolutionary in their mindset. If they're stuck in dogma, it only needs to be this way. They're probably not going to be here in five years. Right. Because right. 2007, we're about to 2018. Things are changing like this. If they're not being evolutionary and understanding that they've got to have more of these revenue streams, more into the online and mobile and Apple and streaming and all, it's just going to come really bad in five years when everything's even more commoditized because 
YouTube is screwing the fitness industry because everybody can put on a video. It's free, it's this, it's that. So prices are going backwards as compared to going upwards that it takes that fit pro, trainer, health professional, studio owner that's willing to understand, I might need to reinvent. I might need to evolve. Do I wanna do it alone? Or do I wanna do it with partners? And do I wanna do it with a company that's already at the forefront of it so I can quickly scale, quickly leverage, or do I wanna go invest tons of money doing stuff? And then if you don't have your business and marketing and distribution right, it's gonna be an ugly world. Yeah. Those are some of the conversations that kind of need to be going on in the industry. And I think each body could, you know, do a better job of bridging that gap. But luckily, you know, we're here to do that. That's why you and I are on this call trying to help fit pros and studio owners understand we can bridge that gap. They want to work with you. They want to help you because we're all in the same mission. Reverse the trend of obesity. That's mission number one. How we get it done, as long as it's done with integrity, done with values, and products you can stand by. Because there's some other products right now, some growing network marketing businesses that are offering some scam crap, some bull crap out there that are offering quick fixes and shiny promises that that's the danger in the market. Beachbody believes what we believe, the healthy formula, fitness, nutrition, coaching. That's why the business doesn't look like you're going to make $10,000 month one and whatnot because they're like, no. We're teaching people behavior change and the healthy formula. This is what will be sustainable for the next thousand years. So let's stick to our guns about that and not go out there and be the people that got to be like, lose 10 pounds in five minutes with this drink and this thing here and that, da, da, da. <laughs> that was very attractive to me about Beachbody, in particular their leadership. Jeff Hill, Mike Neiman, Carl Deichler, and those guys. I got to serve on the coach advisory board, so I've gotten to see really even behind and who they are as humans and the conversations that they have behind the scene. And more than anything, that's what tethers me to this company. Because even in dips and stuff that might be going on or changes that come, I'm still like great people at the helm making ethical choices, not easy choices, not always favorable choices, but freaking the best that you can make sometimes with boots on the ground decisions with the idea like we are the trifecta, fitness, nutrition, coaching, accountability, motivation, support, good quality products, not easy products. That, if anything, that's the alignment I wish the fitness industry should see more and be like, we, what if we worked better with them? Instead of trying to be like, oh, they just want to sell product. They just want to do this. Of course they do. They're called a business. And if you treated your business like a business, you'd understand that. <laughs> it's more the like. I just want to like clap right now. <laughs> but you get it. You get it because you're here. Yeah. And we're having the thing. It's just, you know, it takes seeing it from their world as well because it, it, it was tough even for myself to really understand things to being like, because it, it could feel threat. You could feel threat. Like, oh my God, are they gonna take my jobs? Are they gonna take my clients? Are they gonna take whatever? I don't wanna shift the dollars there. And that may or may not be a market reality depending on how good of a business owner you are, how good of a marketer you are. Like for me, I was just like, I, like you know, I study business and marketing. So I was just like, I, uh, I understand what could potentially happen in my studio, but, as long as I have the income coming in somewhere else, or I've created another model, it doesn't matter to me because the evolution that I'm tied to is just how can I scale changing and reversing obesity? Because I have a commandment. I'm like, thou shall help reverse the trend of obesity. That's, I'm not a religious person, but I live by certain commandments that I've given myself. And I'm like, that's one of them. And I'm like, before my time is said and done, I have to serve that mission. So if it means... I partner with a network marketing company. I start scaling online. I get out of the studio business. That's what happens because I'm like in the studio when I had it, I can help X amount of people, 200 people. That's what we had there. Only a local 10 to mile radius or so. Now I'm like, I'm across three continents. That supersedes my ego. What I once thought 10 years ago and letting go of dogma. Letting go of like, this is the way the industry has to be. This is the way it has to be done. I'm like, 
nope, that gets in my way of progress. Right. That's not a fair assumption. You know that, this, that this actually increased the retention in your studio as well because you were implementing a complete nutrition, fitness, support, and, you know, online and in the gyms themselves. There's just so many ways that this can be implemented to help all the people who are already there and actually increase your client retention and have more people coming to your gym, right? Exactly, because most of the people in fitness, they're one of the biggest things. I mean, and this isn't gonna go away right now because demand isn't going away. Demand, unfortunately, is growing, which should be a signal that we're not doing a good enough job yet in the fitness industry solving the obesity problem because right. we, for so long, have never brought nutrition into the conversation. We're like, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fitness, that's it. And we stayed away from that because th we had to figure out what way can we do it within the boundaries of what we are allowed to do. Like you can't diagnose or prescribe or things like that. So you had to be like, okay, we figured out as long as you're teaching people healthy eating and good whole food patterns and how to just fix that, it's within the scope of what we're allowed to do, awesome. Now we figured out how to bring in nutrition because fitness by itself has a low success rate of getting a person to lose weight, lose fat and all that. But that 80% of the population is coming in for fat loss and weight loss. And you're selling it. You're saying, yes, come train with me and I'll help you lose weight. And you're like, ooh, that's a bold claim when you don't have nutrition and you don't have any accountability or any support like that. And typically the person that is losing that in the gym, they went and got some extra new help. Maybe they went and got Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or they hired a dietitian and whatnot. So I'm like, they got outside help. The person that's just like, I just changed my, my fitness routine, they might gain some muscle. Of course, they're going to lose some inches and some, but typically you can't get that sustainable result over time without changing a person's eating behaviors. Right. So I was just like, oh man, I really got to do a better job of this. If I want to go out there and say, I'm marketing weight loss. If I'm not saying I'm marketing weight loss or fat loss, but I'm just like, hey, we're, we're going to be your fitness program. That's fine. But I was like, I, I want to start. I want to take it. I, I want to market fat loss and weight loss because it, number one, it's going to help change the people and my my mission about obesity. Number two, it's marketable and sellable. So I'm going to make. Um, I'm going to be smarter about that and make more money that way as a business owner. So I was just like, cool. That's what I got to do. That meant I needed to bring the whole program together. The industry right now, I'm like, you're sitting on the, the, the formula is there. Just yeah. do you have it. And if you have it, market it, market it because the nutrition companies out there, the Jenny Craig, the Weight Watchers, those kind of people, I'm just using those off the top of my head. They only offer nutrition. They don't offer fitness. So they're missing a piece of the puzzle. Most right. fitness companies are like, I don't offer nutrition. You're missing a piece of the puzzle. Not many places are bringing it all together without going to like, the LA Beverly Hills, like anti-aging clinics that have decided to market with these pills and collagen in your ass. You will start <laughs> to lose. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's that. If we can be the people bringing together this trifecta, you're going to also stand out from your competition mm -hmm. and you're going to create better. Well, I don't want to get too deep into marketing, but they'll create better unique selling propositions that allow them to capture a better audience in a local area let alone it's a social media world today. It's a social media world. So if you had these online solutions, like one of the biggest things is when we started our Facebook group and I had Fitness Evolution when I had my gym, we just started to see friends of our people were like, hey, I see they're doing like this 21 day slim down and they're doing this thing here and this thing there. Can I do it? And we used to have to say no. Now we were like, oh, you can because we have the beach body. And we have like what I did different that kind of changed the game of how we did things though, is I also created my own stuff. I'm like, I created my own 21 day slim downs or my own this and that. And I just plugged Shakeology in it. So I still branded me. I branded our stuff. I branded my programs. So it wasn't branded as the P90X challenge. It wasn't branded as the Pio challenge. It was like those workouts, my, I may have pulled them in and I pulled in Shakeology, but we did our own branding, our own thing. And that's a thing that trainers sometimes just don't get. You right. be you, be your brand, be your message. Just use these as tools inside to help do some heavy lifting. 
Well, like even with me right right now, like I do um, annually, I do this total transformation group online. And because I have a background in health and exercise science and I behavior change, that's what I do. And um, I incorporate that so that people it's a complete program that I do, you know, so I look at their habits. I look at their triggers. I help them come up with a complete plan, nutrition, fitness, and working on their mental and emotional states as well and their relationship with food. And I think there's just so much that we can do when we're already in health and fitness and that we can offer. And people want to work with people. They don't just want to, you know, buy a product and then be left. They want to actually be part of something that is a complete actual change program. And that's what I really, really think that fitness and um, business owners, like all of the people who are involved in it, they need to see the big picture and they need to get, like you said, have the ego out of the way and just say, okay, how can I use this to benefit others? Not, you know, taking myself out of the equation. How might this actually benefit people if they're going to be doing this anyway, and they're going to be pulling from five different directions to try and, you know, create a lifestyle change, then how can I provide that? You know, how can I provide that? And, and hey, I have a PhD. I'm a researcher. I completely get what you're saying with making sure that the products are legit. You know, I mean, I researched everything and I'm the same way. It's like it's like we're twins. Like I did everything the same way. I am not going to, you know, when I first started my online business, I was giving away programming for free. And and like you said, incorporating some of the DVDs and incorporating the Shakeology. And I did meal plans. And that was before we even had the 21 day fix. Like the container system came out. I was customizing based on and I still customize, you know, using the containers. I help people do that. And that's like our job, I feel like, in the fitness industry, if we're going to say that we can get you results, then we better have a plan to really get you new results. All of it, you know, with the nutrition and the fitness and the nutrition is 90 percent of it. That's 90. That's what I tell people all the time. If You don't change your relationship with food. You know, you're not going to get the results, even if you cannot exer- out exercise a bad diet. You just can't. So like really partnering with people and other and companies and things that have that solution is so critical. It's so critical. And it is something that I think is just being lost because, you know, what I hear all the time is if I, if I became a beach body coach, you know, with all my certifications and I'm, I would be laughed at in the fitness industry, you know, because, and I, and, and that to me, I'm just sort of like, I understand that, but at the same time, don't you see the bigger picture? Go ahead. Yeah. You see, like, you're 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 nice when you say I understand that. That's awesome. You're sweet, and that's why you're rocking and whatnot. I'd be like, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. Because I'd be like, number one, who are they to be judging you? I like, unfortunately, like I, I know the statistics of our industry, and most of the industry does not crack forty five thousand dollars a year. Right. More are making closer to 32,000 studio owners that they think they're successful. They're usually paying everybody out, maybe bringing 50 to 60,000 home for themselves and whatnot. So our industry does not have a track record for being good at business and making money. And to perpetuate this mission, our industry needs to learn how to make more money so that we can scale more, market more, hire more, build. If they want to go build more locations, go build more locations. Awesome. But that stuff takes a lot of money. For me, I was just like, I'm, that's why I'm going all online because then I can freaking not have to worry about all this overhead and whatnot. But it doesn't make it. I was just like, yeah, I, I had the same thing. People come at me with, um, wow, you're selling out, getting out of the studio business and whatnot. Like, I'm like, your, your, your opinion doesn't pay my bills. I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, good. I'm like, I'm, I'm making, you know, I got a seven figure business. I, I over, I live in a dream house overlooking vineyards and wine country with a dream wife who's in the same business, in the same industry, doing the same thing. Then I'm like, y'all don't understand. Our, like, we have the incomes feeding each other, dreams feeding each other. I'm like, cool. Go do your thing. 
And then at the end of time, we'll see when our deathbeds are there, who served more people, who did the bigger thing and whatnot, because that kind of dogma is just doesn't make sense in if you're a servant mindset. Right. If you have an abundance mindset. You, I'm worried about a bunch of people that and, and I'm, I'm obviously grossly generalizing here, but I'm like, I'm worried about a bunch of people that are barely uh, paying their bills. Don't like I had the lifestyle leaving at 5 a.m. coming home at 9 p.m. I was single back then. If I had a family and whatnot and that life of goodbye, kids, it's 5 a.m. I'll come back at 9 p.m. You can't take a sick day. You can't stay home with your kid because they're sick and you want to stay home and it's killing your heart and whatnot. Be like, if I don't go to work, I don't get paid. And then we can't make the bills. That life, I was okay with leaving that life to say there's a better way to serve in the fitness industry than just the way we all came up. That's all we knew back then. When I first got into training, that's all we knew. That's all we had. We didn't have this world today. But the evolutionary mindset as a principle of success demands that you be looking at things as new opportunities so that you can keep serving. You don't need the Kung Fu grip on it. It needs to be one hour personal training. I'm like, let it go, dude, because now there's half hours, there's 20 minutes, there's 25 minutes, there's 10 minutes. There's so much other ways to do things now that it could just be this old thinking you have, this inaccurate thinking you have is why you're broke. That's why you're where you're at. Yeah, and, you know and they, they can be like, yeah, they can say all that crap, and I'm like, that's okay, it's okay, because until you come here and you pay my mortgage or you pay the me being able to sit in masterminds, I'm like, I'm in some of the top level masterminds around the world with Todd Durkin, and Brendan Bouchard, and that. I'm like, I I'm good. I'm in the world of the people I want to be in because I made the choices to see things in another way. The challenge to you in the finishing is are you willing to see things in a new way, to go serve more people, and also give you the lifestyle that you so freaking deserve because you are healthcare today. Your healthcare, the fitness industry, I'm like, your healthcare. You're gonna, you, we can combat big pharma, we can combat this health insurance issue because I'm like, if you just get better at what you do and you get better at scaling and being a business owner mindset, We'll get, we can reverse the situation. But until then, and you're more worried about your ego and somebody laughing at you, then you're getting what you deserve, unfortunately. And I don't <laughs> say that in a bad way. I'm not saying that in a bad way, though, Bob. I'm just saying that as, as in anything. As in anything. If you are unwilling to get your ego or your worries about other people's opinion and judgments, you're just losing the belief in yourself. And the belief in yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. And I do hope that this, what we've talked about today, really has, you know, turned on a couple light bulbs for people who have kind of been on the fence about it or who've had some kind of negative mindset that, look, this is the, this is the way things are going, you know, and I, that's just, you can either be one of the people, like you said, who sees it now and capitalizes on it and is the first to really invent it in your area with your studio, with your business, and you can be the first, or you can wait. And then once you see everybody else doing this, then you come on board with it, right? So you have a choice. You can either be, get on the train and go, or you can just wait, you know, and then it might still be here for you. It might not, you know? So, like well, you said, well, yeah, go ahead. I don't know why, why it's coming from, but here's what I would also say. Let me just see if I can tell you. You getting an echo on your back? No, I'm good. You're okay, good. good. So I'll get good. So um, um, I would tell them that no matter what, whether it's your body or not, look for some way to add to additional revenue stream. Maybe Shakeology and the sports performance line and all the things that Beachbody has brought on aren't the one for them. Well, go find one. Go find something that you can do because your clients need nutrition resources. They need help with that. And you need to bring that in because that will grow your business, get you some off the floor income, build your lifestyle, and help serve the mission better. The reason I chose Beachbody is because a lot of those other ones out there, they're not a fully focused fitness company. They're like, well, we have this and we also sell that and we also sell soap and we sell this and we sell that. And the, the nutrition lines are just like one little division of what they do. 
I'm like Beach Body has been in the fitness game for decades before they were a network marketing business. So I'm like, oh, they got fitness, they got equipment, they've got freaking the nutrition products, they've got a business model of creating fitness coaches. This aligns with everything I believe in about the fitness industry, and they have a singular focus. That's why their quality is much higher than a lot of the other companies, that their products are just some afterthoughts in there. Not this is all we do. Carl Dykler freaking in, in, invented the fitness infomercial. I'm like, I'll align with that dude. I'm like, I'm gonna follow that guy. And while not every decision he makes is the top one, he's always trying to reinvent and think through and take feedback and whatnot. And they have only one mission, reverse the trend of obesity. I'll go there. Yes. Thank you so much for this, Vito. You've been amazing on this call and you know, I just can't, I can't thank you enough for it, you know, for coming Dude, on and doing this and taking the time. And my pleasure. <laughs> Hopefully we got to serve some peeps and whatnot. I think the, no matter what, that message can go out there and do some good. So thanks for carving out this time. Let's go fire up some peeps. Oh yeah. All right. Well, you have an awesome weekend and a Merry Christmas to you and your family. You too. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Okay. Bye-bye.